Let me go back here for a second. So here we discussed the same situation. We said, okay, why don't you just write the two options? I don't want that. I don't want to write the two options. I just want to simplify as much as possible. This was a lecture from last time. I just took it out of my recycling bin. Okay. So any suggestions inside of the absolute value? Combine the two terms, 3 minus 1 third. Good. So what should I do? Give them the same denominator. Excellent. Which three. is? Uh, 9 over 3 minus 1 third. Very good. So it's 3, and you multiply this by 3. Very good. So 9 minus x in absolute value less than epsilon. Great job. Now, remember there was a property that we discussed last time, A over B in absolute value equals the absolute value of A over the absolute value of B. So now I have to use that property. The absolute value of 9 minus x divided by the absolute value of 3 less than epsilon. Do not try to multiply by 3 at this point. You are not allowed to at this point. Do not try, please. So now this... I don't like, I never like 9 minus x. It's not in descending order. Now it is. Now I don't like it by the fact, for the fact that it has a negative leading coefficient. That's not a problem. I can always rearrange x min 9 minus x into negative x minus 9, and I'm going to do just that. So this becomes 3, but this top changes into this. So the absolute value of negative x minus 9 over 3 now, clean 3, that's allowed now. And now is, I'm going is that is that a necessary step or is that just a preference? Required, necessary, mandatory steps. No question each and every one of them. Very good. Thank you for asking because I may have not put this in writing. Every step, a mandatory step. This on the side, you don't have to do it here. You can do it over there. I just wanted to explain what I'm doing. But each and every of these four steps are absolutely mandatory. The next step is mandatory as well. And the next step is says this, the absolute value of a times b, which we discussed last time. So now I have the absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of x minus 9 divided by 3 less than epsilon. Now I will show that this is 1 and by not writing anything and multiplying by 3. So from here I have the absolute value of x minus 9 is less than 3 epsilon. So one, two, three, four, five, six mandatory steps. Jumping from here here somehow brings no credit. Thank you for asking that. Okay, now. Can you pull the paper down the screen just so I can see? Yes, of course. Again, yes, is this okay? Okay, so one is the first item. Just the one is the starting point. The next one is finding the least common denominator inside. The next one is applying this property. The next one is um, factoring out the negative sign. The next one is applying the product property. And the next one is multiplying by 3 and writing this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now let's take a look. We started here. This was our starting point. But this is what I want to get. I want to get, this is what I want to get. As long as I have on this side nothing else but x minus 9, I found delta, and I can stop. So now I'm asking you, did I find delta? And if I did, what does it equal to? Delta equals 3. Why just part of it? What do you mean? It has to depend on epsilon. So then that delta must be? 
Um, three epsilon. That's it! And it's done. Simply by comparison. I got exactly what I wanted. So this must be delta. So this is step one. There is also step two. Why? Because we need to show this implies this and this implies this. But I will waive you of step two. If you just write this. Step two, show that delta equals three epsilon works by reversing the steps from above from one that's it you do not have to actually do anything so what what does this say to us if you tell me use epsilon point one can you find delta if epsilon is point one can I find delta Yeah, multiply it by three. That's it. What if somebody else says no? I want epsilon to be 0 0.01. Can you give me delta? 0.03. And this can go on forever. Why? Because the limit exists. I'm not sure what I wrote there. So, because the limit exists, I can choose any epsilon I want and I will find the corresponding delta. I can go as small as possible, as large as possible, because the limit exists, it doesn't matter. Choose any epsilon you want. Delta will always be found. Good pick. If you think that we need another, let's choose another. If not, that's all I had to say about the epsilon-delta definition.